in machine learning, one can make a distinction between what's called generative approaches versus discriminative discriminative approaches. And uh, to talk about these, let's t let's think about a, a classification setting. So say we're in we've got data points in R2. So we've got R2. Our x's are in R2. Maybe that's one axis, so that's like the x1. That's like the x2. And we've got some points. Maybe I'll draw them as red for one class. Something like this. One class. And maybe I'll do blue. Another class, something like this. So we've got these points. Maybe this is a little sparser over here. Got some points here. And there's not a clear, you know, they, they kind of overlap here. So, in a, so now if we had a new point, right, classification, you would say, you know, what's, so maybe an easy one would be like over here. So what's that? Well, looks like it ought to be a blue. And in a generative approach, so we'll talk about, actually, let's talk about discriminative first. So discriminative approach, you model, so the, let's say the, the x is, so we get this data x1, y1, oh, let me use superscripts here, x1, y1, first data point labeled, and then we get some more data points up to, say, n, xn, yn. And a discriminative approach would be to model the probability of the y's of a y given its x. So I'm taking x and y as a prototypical as a prototypical um, point here. So x and y, or maybe you could think about x and y as a new new point that we need to classify. And we're going to model in a discriminative approach. So let me say this is discriminative. We're going to model the probability of y given x. So given this new x here has some coordinate x1 and x2, and we want to predict its class. So if we had a model, so say we had a simple model where we only paid attention to in this class in, in this case it looks like x2 isn't doing very much so maybe our discriminative model only pays attention to say x1 and we say that the probability of y given that given say this is the first coordinate x1 maybe it only depends on that or we can well, let's make it clear let's so let's just keep it as x and then this is there might be an x2 axis but maybe the probability is uh, doesn't uh, well it can't be constant but it would be um, oh yeah I guess it could be constant it could be constant in the x2 di direction so the probability of y given x is uh, say it looks something like this so so if we call these reds call that one class one and we'll call the blues class 2, or rather 0, then the probability that y equals 1, so let's say that, so let's say probability that y equals 1 given x, say this is 1, so maybe when it's over, you know, when we're in here, we're, we're quite certain, so this is going to be close to 1, and then it drops off very quickly, and then when we're over here, we say, you know, for these x1 values, we're pretty sure that it's it's a the class is zero. So the probability that y is one is is very small. So maybe we have a discriminative model like this. 
Now a generative model, on the other hand, would model both, it would model the joint distribution, x and y. So in this case, the x's might have some, so we could factor this as the, the density, let's write it as f, so the density of x given y times the probability of y. And these densities, uh, so for example here, you know, we might have a density for the zero class that looks something like, well, you know, maybe a, a Gaussian, something like this, right? That might be Gaussian for that guy and maybe a density for this guy that's sort of concentrates in this region. And in a generative model, since we're paying attention to the distribution on x, so we could also, instead, we could write this as the probability of y given x times the marginal density of x. And uh, in a generative model, you model the the densities as well as so you could you could view it two ways you could view it as the the class marginal probabilities and then the conditional density of x given the class or you could view it as just some marginal density on x and then the probability of the class given the x so the discriminative part shows up here and in this example which i i chose to illustrate this Suppose we now had a point over here. Suppose you're, you were asked, you were given a new x over here, and you wanted to predict its value, its, its class, its y. Well, in this di uh, discriminative type of model, you, might, you, would, you would probably say that that's uh, class 1. And, but in a generative model, if you are modeling these class conditional densities, then you would you would probably you you would be more inclined to say that that belongs to class zero. So in this perhaps contrived example, at least, it and 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 more generally, I mean, a generative model is is more powerful in some sense than a discriminative model because well, you're just accounting for more things. But there are good reasons to use discriminative models, very good reasons actually, it's not just the fact that you're you know, being lazy and sort of ignoring this other part. It's So the, the reasons, well one reason is that uh, in a generative model you have to estimate the, these, these densities, well one of these at least. If you take this approach you have to, mar you have to model these and Estimating a density takes a lot of data, and statistically speaking, it's very difficult to do. So you're uh, you're inclined to make mistakes. You know your estimates will have high variance, especially if you don't have much data. That was a sort of uh, statistical um, argument there, but generally, you know, and you you can probably see that that. Uh, it's going to be difficult to model this this density if, unless you have lots of data, and as a result, a generative model can be uh, can have can have worse performance than a discriminative model. So that's what people mean when they talk about generative versus discriminative models. And let me explain this terminology why these are called generative at least. So generative models, well, often they have a very natural, so one sort of appealing thing about generative models is that they also often have a very natural sort of interpretation, and uh, it's in terms of a generative process. So this, this formula suggests it here. So the generative process, which we might describe this, this data by, would be first we're going to choose a class, y, 0 or 1, in this case just 0 or 1 since these are our only two classes. So, so we choose y according to this its marginal distribution. And then 
given the class, we're going to choose a point. So first we choose zero, maybe, and then we pick some point. That's, the gener that's what's called the generative process. And then maybe if we run the generative process again, maybe we pick one this time, and then we, we choose, uh, I don't know, say this point. You know, we, we choose it from the, the margin, you know, from the conditional distribution on x given y equals 1. So that's why it's called a generative process. Versus a discriminative, and a discriminative, you don't have any distribution over the x's, so you can't generate the x's. All you can do is sort of discriminate between the classes given x.